Welcome everybody to Sharing Soulful Stories and today I'm here with the beautiful Amy Taylor Cabaz. Welcome Amy. Thank you. Let me introduce for everybody Amy. Amy is a writer, producer, speaker and mother to three young children. After more than a decade covering breaking news and current affairs for the ABC around the country, her traditional career took an unexpected turn when she found herself lost, overwhelmed and diagnosed with a thyroid condition after the birth of her first daughter. 11 years and two more babies later, she is now the author of best-selling Happy Mama, The Guide to Finding Yourself, the host of the Happy Mama Movement podcast and runs numerous online project programs for mothers all over the world. She is an international award-winning coach and is currently working on her next two books to be published with Hay House International. Fantastic. I didn't know about those new books that are coming, Amy. Well done and welcome. Thank you. Yes, they're my new babies. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah, that's right. No more babies. No more real babies. <laughs> Living human babies anyway. Um, so... We're here to open up a conversation about spirituality and I would love to open with the question, what does spirituality mean to you? It's such a good question. I, um, being someone who loves words, I was like, oh, how am I going to answer this? So I really sat with it because it is a really um, interesting word that means so many different things to people, which is what I love about what you're doing in these series is trying to uh, break down those judgments or beliefs around this. So for me, spirituality really is this connection with something bigger than myself and at the same time, is within myself, if that makes sense. It's this great spiritual connection, this belief that there is more and that there is a divine universe that we live in. And I guess as importantly that that is also within me. That's been a big uh, process for me to learn and understand over the years. Beautiful. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. And I really, I, I love the freedom in, in, in finding new ways to express what spirituality means that, that don't feel restricted or confined to a certain modality, a, you know, set way of um, believing in things. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I know we sort of touched on it a little bit in your introduction, but can you share with me what your spiritual journey has been like any highs or lows or aha moments that stand out um, that have brought you to where you are today? Oh yes, so many highs and lows. Um, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think the reason why that explanation of what spirituality is involves what's inside me is because I was brought up um, a Catholic. My mum was a very devout Catholic and uh, literally went to school at the convent with the nuns and um, at one stage wanted to become a nun. So I was very much brought up in that strong Catholic faith, church every Sunday, um, went to Catholic schools. And so for me when I was younger, not that I knew what spirituality was, but anything religious or any connection or thought about this was always very much outside of me. And mm -hmm. that's why when I think of spirituality, it's that connection with outside, but it's also that belief that it's within me as well because that's what um, I think I've been trying to come to terms with for my whole life. So I guess an abridged version of the story is that um, we were very Catholic oriented growing up and then my mum had a falling out with the church when we moved to Adelaide when I was about in year three, so when I was about nine, eight or nine. I never really understood what that was. Um, she just said she didn't feel supported by the church anymore. And then she went on this complete new age journey, totally went off on this different path, discovered Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer and Cheryl Richardson and as a 
very cu curious and always questioning child. I was born with the, but why, but why, but why? Um, I kind of went along this journey with her. So I have literally, since I was about 10 or 11, been completely surrounded by this new age, I guess you would call, questioning of who we are and our deeper connection with the universe. I, you know, my mum would take me to Hay House events when I was a teenager. It just has completely always been a part of my life. But as always, we then have to find it ourselves. So then I got to my early 20s and rejected it all. Just went, yeah, whatever, that's my mum's total woo-woo, hippie crap. I don't believe in any of that. And I'm going to be a serious journalist. And a serious journalist questions it. And a serious journalist doesn't do things like vision boards or meditate or, uh, I don't know, have any spiritual connection whatsoever. And I really, um, I like to see it now is that I really activated that masculine side of myself and really lived in that masculine for many, many years. And um, would... It was like I had this secret that I'd occasionally read the Hay House books or the, you know, You Can Heal Your Life or The Power of Manifestation or things like that, but I'd kind of hide it, you know, to be very secret. I wouldn't talk to anyone about it because, you know, I was a journalist now. And, um, and that was the way it was for many, many years until, as you alluded, I... Um, when I was nearly 31, just a few weeks shy of turning 31, I gave birth to my first daughter and that was the cracking open of everything I knew and believed about the world and my very tight grip on that masculine energy and my identity and all of that was cracked open. And... I literally was brought to my knees. You know, I know that that's a saying that people say, but I literally was on my knees crying, saying to God, I don't understand what's happening and I don't know who I am anymore. And that was sort of the coming back to this questioning that I had always done when I was younger but had pushed to one side. So I hear this a lot with, with women. We have this curious nature, we talk to the fairies and we connect with the moon or we have these beliefs when we're younger and then we get into this time of our life of teenagers or early 20s and we really kind of reject all of that and shut that part of ourselves down. And then we something brings us back to it, doesn't it? Mm. And so that was 11 years ago and... To be honest, it took me many years to be brave enough to talk the way that I do, many, many years. I was so afraid of judgment um, because of my career and my background. And even when I finally, finally, years later, left my role at the ABC to to be a life coach and work with mums, I wasn't even brave enough to tell people at the ABC what I was going to do. I said I was going to write a book because there was so much fear of being judged and being weird and woo-woo and hippie and whatever words I was conjuring up in my mind. So it has taken me a lot to be able to step into this fully and even though within my life over the last 11 years I've been very spiritual, I have found that it only gets stronger the braver I am to talk about this and share my experience. And so one of my, one of my daily intentions now is to be an inspiring role model of a life of faith, to really be braver in saying, hey, this is what has worked for me and I think we need this as mm. women of the, in this time and, and um, space that we're in and so to really try and, yeah, own it a little bit more each day. <laughs> Does that make sense? Totally. It totally makes sense. And thank you so much for sharing all of that because I feel that there'll be a lot of people out there that, that resonate with that um, 
they've had this spiritual curiosity or they've read the books and they know there's something there and it feels really true for them, but they're not confident to share it. And I certainly know from my own perspective, you know, the types of conversation that I'm wanting to have and not always the types of conversation other people want to have with you. So that, you know, that does, that can happen um, at times when you talk about this, it, it, it sort of almost makes other people uncomfortable to hear it um, at times. So um, thank you so, so much. Yes. Sorry, I was going to say, and there's a lot of fear of not only what judgment there will be, but how it might change your relationship. Mm. So, I, so many women have, oh, I don't know how this will change my life if I embrace this a bit more. I don't know what the repercussions will be like you know and it's always good repercussions but there are shifts in your world when you start to really um embrace this way of looking at things so yeah it can be scary mm, mm, definitely and how actually just touching on that like how do you feel that you've changed as part of this this journey if you reflect back now I don't even know how to answer that because it's so, I have changed on every single cellular level, I believe. But at the same time, I feel like I've just come back to who I was originally. So it's this strange contradiction of I have changed completely, but at the same time, I think I'm just who I always was now. I had this really amazing experience last year where I went to, America for my work to do some research and study over there and I had this moment where I was walking the streets of New York on my own, first time travelling on my own in, in about 15 years so it was like this freeing feeling and walking along and just remembering that when I was about 8 or 10 just having this dream of studying in New York and having this complete driving force to tell stories about women and change the world and I totally believed it was going to happen and I had every faith in myself that I would live in New York and study at this university and do all of this and then there I am 41 years old walking the streets and I just thought oh, I've just I finally come back to that person that I was before all of the fear and the doubt and the self-judgment and the pain and all of the things that happen to all of us in life. My life is no more painful than anyone's. But um, so, uh, yeah, everything has changed. But also I now am who I always was. I think that's what's happened. I, I think that's the most perfect explanation. I, I just love that. I think that that... It wouldn't surprise me if a similar explanation would fit so many people's journeys by touching on that idea that actually it's it's this coming home to who you really are element yeah. of it, but like we had to take this journey to find that. Um, that is amazing. Thank you. Yes, and I, I think it, it is this journey, this path, and it feels like it goes like this, but actually it's not. It's exactly the way it was meant to be. Um, and now I come back to it with such a different appreciation and gratitude and strength. But I guess to sum up what that process between 8 and 40 has been, it's been, uh, you know, it really has about, it has been about learning to trust myself and trust the universe to get out of my head to... Um, I've been so terribly hard on myself. I used to be so critical and so mean. My mm. I call it the inner mean voice because that voice was just really horrible. And so I had to learn. And it started with really basic things like, you know, affirmations and things like that. But then, and I think sometimes that's the entry point. We start with these really simple ideas of mm. writing things down trying to keep a journal or learning about self-talk but then as you peel those layers back you get to really um, get to the core of who you are and then that opens up bigger questions and then you start feeling connected with the, the greater power and you start to trust things differently so 
you know, I guess you ask how things have changed. It's the biggest changes in how I treat myself. Mm. And uh, that has then meant a change in career, a change in relationships, a change in myself, the way that I act, speak, all of it. It's just trickled out from that. But, mm. yeah, I think that's the... Amazing, amazing. And one other thing that I really am hoping to help... Um, people do is get a sense of what spirituality sort of actually looks like in people's lives so what types of things do you include on a, a, a day to day basis or you know in a rhythm or what have you that you feel help to keep you connected to that spiritual side of yourself yes for me, I am at my best and most connected when I am in a full routine. I, <laughs> yes, I am, you know, if you looked at my Ayurvedic body type and my star sign and mixed it all together, I am the absolute routine ritual girl. So for me, and I know this is not the way some people like to do it. They like to be a lot more spontaneous and check in with themselves. But mm. for me personally... I work best when I do the same thing every day and I have these really strong pillars that don't change or move. So for me, it's up at 5 a.m. every morning to do my morning ritual. Now, that is absolutely easy for me to do because I was in breakfast radio for 15 years where I used to wake up at 3.30, so 5.30, 5 o'clock to sleep in, um, and my body clock's just set for early morning. I can't sleep in. So I get up at 5 before my kids get up. And I, you know, years ago it would start off with following other people's ideas or routines or listening to different people's voices. Now I kind of think of that hour that I have to myself before I go and exercise or do something at six, I think of it as a conversation with myself and the universe. And it really is that. I, sometimes I sit there and I just have my warm drink and just literally stare at nothing <laughs> and just check in with my thoughts and have a conversation with God, with the universe and see what's happening. Sometimes it's a really long meditation. Sometimes it's in my journal. But it is always this space where mm -hmm. I kind of, you know, it's like that Judy Bloom book, Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. I feel like it's kind of what I do every morning. It's like, good morning, universe. I'm back. What do you got to say to me today? It's really this, it's a conversation that I have every morning and I cannot live without it. We've been mm -hmm. traveling with my holiday and I didn't have the amount of space or time and I really noticed the difference in myself. Mm. So um, within that hour, I'm very flexible, but I, I have to have that. And then the rest of it for me is um, I, I am a yogi. My other great connection and happy place is at a yoga studio. I, you know... I swear I just sat at the feet of teachers in a past life. I'm <laughs> the old student. I just sit there front row, you know. Yep. <laughs> yes, whatever you say, yes. And I have um, the great gift of right at the end of my street, two of the best yoga studios here in Sydney. One's um, Jiva Mukti, which is a beautiful um, type of yoga, that Ashtanga yoga that comes out of New York, which is very... Um, based on yoga philosophy and um, they have amazing music and you just have the most beautiful classes. And then at the other end of the street I have Kundalini, which has been a life-changing practice for me. It's um, really, really helped me get out of my head, which mm -hmm. is where I live, and learn how to shift energy because as you and I have both been, we've been uh, students of teachers that teach about the chakras and our energy systems and I got that in a mental way but I always struggled with the physical and energetic connections and how to shift it and move it and empower myself until I sat on the floor of the Kundalini Yoga Studio and went, oh, this is what they've been talking about. So my <laughs> week filled with these two different yoga classes. I'm very lucky I get to do that. So 
yeah, those two things I couldn't live without, my morning practice and some kind of, uh, I, I still really need teachers. Mm. This is what I've also learned about myself. I, um, it, some people I know, my sister included, are born with this beautiful optimistic outlook on life. You know, they're the glass half full kind of person and they are naturally just always able to look at life that way. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> to be totally honest, I um, I have that tendency to be quite dark and so having regular classes and regular teachers and regular times that my family know mummy's going to this class and I can sit there and be reminded of what I know mm. is really powerful. And for those people that are watching, I guess I'm sharing this because I think you have to find your own way to support yourself, don't you? Um, and it's taken me a really long time to to think that, to to realise that this is how best I stay aligned and on track is that I, I really need those places to go to and tell someone, get someone else to tell me and remind me and teach me because I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I knew that. I've forgotten about that. And so that's really helped me. That's... Thank you. That's so, so beautiful to share that. And, and I love actually that you, you talked of being a very routine person and that routine suits you and yet you're open to a lot of flexibility in that space that, um, that you carve out for yourself each day. So I sort of love there's um, a bit of both within the routine. There can be this space for whatever feels right on that day. So I know you yeah, touched. I I'm like, sorry. Please go. Sorry, slight delay. So I, I'm jumping in as soon as you start speaking. Okay. It's like um, I think it's Elizabeth Gilbert says that to write her books, to serve her muse of creativity, she just says to God, "Okay, I'll show up between nine and eleven every day at the computer. It's your job to tell me what to write." And I think it like that's what I do. I. It, if I show up at 5 a.m. every morning and, you know, some mornings it's a bit like, oh, I don't know what I feel like this morning and so I have to really, but so if I just keep showing up, amazing things happen. That's what I sort of feel about it. Brilliant. Perfect. Thank you. That's awesome. I'm glad you shared that little extra piece. Um, you touched on it earlier and I know with your programs and the Happy Mama movement, uh, you share a lot of beautiful ways for people to help them get out of their heads and, and things like that. I just wondered, is there any extra thing you could suggest that's a good, not a good, but like that may be a, an, an, a starting place for someone that's ready to dip their toe in, to try something and open to explore their spirituality? Yes. I was thinking about this before the call and I wanted to say that I think it's a really private thing at the beginning and to be really careful, not careful, perhaps mindful is a better word, on who you share it with and who you talk to and really just honour this connection, this very personal connection that you're trying to find. I think it's at the start or one of the first lessons of A Course in Miracles that says this is your personal practice and you do not need to share it with anybody. Mm -hmm. And I really loved that when I read it because I think it is and we can be very bruised and feel very judged very early if we start talking about it to others who aren't in the same place. So. I just really wanted to share that with the women that are watching this that um, are really feeling at the beginning of this, make sure you find a place where it is safe to talk about it, like your work, mm -hmm. Joe, and, um, you know, we've got such blessings of closed Facebook groups now and all of that, but just be really mindful that this is yours. It doesn't matter whether anyone else judges it or what they think of it. Let it be your beautiful exploration of, of who you are and your connection. And then I would, my greatest tool, and yes, I'm a writer, so I know it's easy for me compared to others, but the greatest thing that I've done over the years is journaling, mm. is starting that conversation with myself, is learning how to 
you know, through my journal, I've learned how to speak nicely to myself. I've almost trained that inner voice to be kinder, um, to have this answer when those mean thoughts pop up. I've really discovered what I most want in life and how I most want to feel and I've really built this connection. Like sometimes it is that, are you there, God, it's me, Amy kind of writing and other times it's this really beautiful um, intention setting, like saying to the universe what you most want. So learning and connecting to the idea of writing in a journal is such a great place to start. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And also thank you for pointing out, um, thank you for sharing about the journaling and for pointing out the idea of keeping it private. I, I remember in my late teens, early 20s coming across the Course in Miracles, I too had a mum that had every book, um, every self-help book on the shelf. And I remember picking it up and just thinking, wow, this is incredible. But shared it with somebody, I can't recall who, that, that basically put into my mind, that's a cult, be really careful with that, da, 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 da. You know, and I shut the book and I put it away. And now there's all these beautiful spiritual teachers that speak of the wisdom in that book that I feel like that was there for me all that years ago. And, and my fear and my, that, the judgment allowed me to just go, okay, I won't go there. Um, instead of trusting what felt right to me, you know. That's mm. right, and it does, and that's, I'll say it again, it's what's so great about what you're doing is it's kind of giving permission to see that all of us come to it a different way and spirituality can be, you know, it doesn't really matter what it is for you. If it makes you happy, makes you a kinder, more compassionate human being, it doesn't matter. I've said that to my husband who is not into this stuff at all, although he does talk about the universe a little bit now, but I've said to him before, who cares if it's all crap? Really, who cares? It makes me so happy and mm. it makes me live a better life and it makes me try my hardest to be kind and compassionate to myself and to others. So even if it isn't true, I don't care. It's making me happy and be a better person. So really it doesn't matter how you come at it or which books you read as long as you're connecting to this greater sense of a purpose and a connection to the earth people everything around you I think it's amazing <laughs> what a perfect way to end uh, and and complete our conversation today um, I can see my internet's playing up a bit but before we go can you share with us if people want to know more about your work and what it is that you do where's the best I will put links below but if you just share now where's the best way for them to find you yes um best way to find me is happymama.com.au which is for any woman at any stage of motherhood, I've had grandmas do my program and they've loved it. So it really is this place where we talk about the spiritual and identity shift that happens in these years of raising our families. It's really about honouring yourself as a woman and not losing yourself in this role of mother and work and everything else. And really mm. between you and I um, and all of your listeners, it is about the spiritual journey as a woman. But um, for a lot of mums, they come to it, come to me or my work just because they're feeling really lost and overwhelmed and they feel like they've lost themselves. Mm. And what I'm really doing, inviting them to connect with themselves in a new way but sometimes that might be three programs in or they yeah. realize that's what I'm doing <laughs> I have meditations and a podcast and a book and um, and things like that and I run women's circles around the country and so and the podcast as you mentioned at the beginning is the happy mama movement because I really do feel like it is a movement that we as women are starting to own this side of ourselves and be more open and proud of it and empower each other and ourselves to really um, connect with ourselves in this way. Perfect. That is amazing. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here with me today and for your time and being part of this uh, and sharing your story. So thank you so much, Amy. 
Thank you, beautiful. It's lovely. I love what you're doing. Mm. We'll talk soon. All right. Bye now. <laughs>